السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وولي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We always commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter how much we praise him it will not be enough We ask Allah to accept from us the few words of praise and the few actions of praise that we engage in and we ask him to forgive our shortcomings also we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'allim al-bashariya al-khair the one who taught all the goodness that we have we ask Allah to bless him his entire household for indeed Allah has chosen the specific blessed household to be those who were with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is our duty not only to love them, but also to include them in this dua of blessings and salutations. We ask Allah to bless as well all His companions. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them and all those who struggled and strove over the years to bring this deen to us in a way that today we are seated here. May Allah bless every single one of us and our offspring to come and may He use us to alleviate the suffering of one another and not to create the suffering within one another. We need to say an Ameen a little bit louder. May Allah grant us the ability to alleviate the suffering of one another and not to be the means of creating the suffering for one another. Ameen. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, this afternoon we are speaking on several matters and issues connected to the cries of the Ummah. One might wonder, what is he going to say? The reality is we bleed Mostly because some of us make the rest of us bleed. And sometimes if I were to ask you, my brother, who has been the most vulgar against you, you will mention the name of a Muslim. And if I were to say who has harmed you the most, you will mention the name of a Muslim. And if I were to say who has caused the most suffering to you, you may mention a family member's name. These are some of the first cries. And this is why we are suffering even more. We cannot face reality. We sit in one masjid. We have hatred in our hearts for one another at times. I'm not saying it is the case all the time. But it is on the increase. We look for the smallest difference to divide us. Rather than looking for the 5,000 common points that unite us. It is a great difficulty that we need to deal with. It is an inferiority complex that we suffer with. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Brothers and sisters, on the globe we are being trampled by do you know whom? By ourselves to start with. If you were to look at the globe and see what's happening, you would find Muslim on Muslim. That's what you would find. If you were to look in your own lives, in your societies, communities, your families, we are being trampled by those who are closest to us supposedly. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in this regard. And we are crying really. We are weeping. We are trying to look for common points whilst others make it their business to ensure that the only thing they see in front of them are the few points that perhaps we differ upon and they use that to create the biggest wars on earth. May Allah protect us. Really, it's something to cry about. Today, I witnessed a little document and I was so happy. It brought joy to my heart to see so many ulama from across the board uniting upon something that was definitely worth uniting upon because it affected the ummah at large. Subhanallah, what a beautiful document. And I was so happy and impressed. And I said to myself, if people who have a few differences can unite upon the commonalities which are far greater when it comes to common ground, that is when we will be able to achieve growth in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not saying that we should disregard a few differences. No, perhaps we can discuss them in a positive way. Perhaps we can educate ourselves regarding them. And perhaps we may arrive at a point where we agree to disagree. 
But we will still love one another within the points that we may do so, so that we can collectively protect the ummah from the greater bleeding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Sometimes people don't understand why is this scholar doing this and why is that man saying that and why should this happen? Some people are so small minded they cannot see beyond their noses. Really. Whilst others are concerned of where the ummah is going to be 50 years from today. And so therefore we need to steer the youth and the youngsters towards what is known as discussion and tolerance and looking at common points and discussing perhaps differences positively in a way that we can perhaps arrive at solutions and conclusions. Today, and I've given this example a million times, we have differences between husband and wife who love each other perhaps more than you would ever dream of and that is such an intimate love. But they would understand we need to set aside these one, two differences. I need to tolerate. I need to what, do what is known as saddidu wa qaribu. You know, come as close as you can, you know, straighten a little bit and see how best you can operate together, husband and wife. If we had to divorce our wives because we had a few differences with them, not one of us would be married here today. Do you know that? MashaAllah, some of us are seated with more than one wife. I see the brothers looking at May Allah protect us and grant us ease and goodness. I, when I was looking at you, I had to say something that made you smile, you know. So no matter what happens, we, we should understand and realize that there is always room for coming together. I want to ask you a serious question this afternoon. Do you feel love for those around you today? Do you really feel within your heart that I love my brothers and sisters for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you don't, you have issues. That's the simplest youth way of wording it. Easy. You have issues. It's, it's such a nice way of wording it because you don't really get to what it is. You just say you have issues. So to be honest with you, yes, if we do not feel the love for one another, we have a problem. Because if we do not feel the love for one another here in the house of Allah, and we live in one city, and we live in a country, how then are we going to reach out to those who are crying with tears of blood? May Allah protect us. Look at the disasters across the globe. Let's not talk only about the Muslims. Let's talk about the disasters, humanitarian disasters that occur where we need to assist on humanitarian grounds. And sometimes we are the furthest away. And sometimes we find a disaster in a country and we tell ourselves they deserved it. A'udhu Billah. May Allah protect us from that type of a devil within us. The day it comes to us, the others will also say they deserved it. Then who is going to help who on this particular globe? May Allah protect us. Really, this type of thinking we need to correct. We should be compassionate. We should be humanitarian. We should be people who reach out to animals. Subhanallah. Obviously, human beings come before animals in the book of Islam. But we should be reaching out to both. And even beyond that, the ecosystem, the plantation, the vegetation, whatever else there is, the water, the marine life. As a Muslim, we are taught goodness and kindness. And reaching out to all of this, it's part of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, we get irritated with one another for the smallest thing. Small things, we get so irritated. And you know what's worse than that? When we intentionally irritate others. You know, an example comes to mind. People know me as saying things on a lighter note. I see they're already smiling before I've said anything. <laughs> to be honest with you, let me give you an example. What is the example about? It's just an example. The example is about how we sometimes go out of our way to irritate people. You know, when, when you want to create an enmity, we go out and nudge the, the guy in such a way that we make sure he is irritated. I wonder if you've ever seen a clip that I, somebody WhatsApp to me some time back of a man who was sitting listening to the Jumu'ah khutbah and one brother crossed him and he looked back and he was hurt on his shoulder. Another brother crossed him, he was hurt on his shoulder for the second time. And then the third brother crossed him, he got hold of him, hit him to the ground, thumped him up, really nailed him hard. And after that, the moral of that whole story was don't disturb people whilst they are trying to listen to the imam on the Jumu'ah. And there was a hadith made mention of regarding the sin of actually crossing people's paths and disturbing them. That, that means we sometimes force people to become irritated with us. Let me give you an example that I'm talking about. I think you won't forget this. It's sim similar to the parrot one we said many, many years back. They say... 
a husband hit his wife. Now, you know, nowadays, even if you don't, you look at her and she sues you, you know? <laughs> Why? Because he pulled his eyes. Whoa, whoa. And the next thing they say, I was intimidated. So we need to be careful. So the husband, the husband was taken to the courts and uh, the judge says, Why did you beat up your wife? So he looks at the judge. He says, Judge. The judge says, you cannot. It's impossible. Why did you lift a finger? Do you know? And to be honest, before we go ahead, believe me, don't think that a husband has a green light to beat up his wife in Islam. Don't think that. Do not think that. May Allah protect us. You don't just engage in violence and make, create hooliganism out of Muslims. No. We should be the best to our spouses. If the hadith says, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the best from amongst you are those who are best to their spouses or their family members. I challenge you to live up to that. May Allah protect us. You know, we are talking about cries of the ummah. Sometimes our women are busy crying because of us. Have we reached out to them? Sometimes we are the cause of those tears. And then we want to reach out to Syria and Palestine. She is a little Syria and Palestine within your occupied territory. May Allah protect us. Really. So let's try and mend our ways back at home inshallah as well. We're not saying don't reach out elsewhere. We reach out everywhere as much as we can. But let's not be hypocritical. Reach out to those whom you have harmed for so many years. Start off by apologizing. It is more valuable than the half a million pounds we may have raised this afternoon. Really. So this man says, Judge, you know my wife came in front of me with a big purse, this size. And she looked at me and smiled. And she opens the big purse. And from, the, from inside it, she took out another purse. And then she put the big one down. And then she opened the other one. And she smiled at me. And she took out another one from inside that one. And then she put the bigger one down. And then she opened the other one. And she took out another one from inside that one. And then put the other one down. And then she opened that one and took out another one. And left the one down. And then opened that one and took out another one. And then put the other one down. And then she had this little one which she opened and took out another one and she put so the judge says get to the point get to the point he says judge judge you are getting so angry when i'm telling you the story imagine i was right there allahu akbar allahu akbar this is what i mean when i say we sometimes open purses in front of our brothers and sisters intentionally irritating them and when the story goes out, it irritates others as well. Look at this man. He's irritated solely by hearing what has happened. Imagine if we were there. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. So the moral of what I'm saying is do not intentionally create irritation that will result in hatred, which will result in violence, which will result in so much damage to the Muslim ummah and tears that can be avoided. And yet they are there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So point number one we learn from this afternoon, speaking about the cries of the ummah. We as an ummah, it's about time we got up and learned to love one another. You might not have everyone on your spiritual level. You might not have everyone think exactly like you. But if you have a feeling within your heart that this is my Muslim brother and sister, you will go very, very far in solving and resolving the crises of the ummah. And inshallah, in May Allah grant us the, the, the ability to do that. But in alleviating the suffering to the degree that the cries do not even have to be heard, they won't even come. And let's face reality on the ground today. You know, I visited the UK a few times. And mashallah, Allah grant us goodness and ease. We see lots of goodness. There is a great awakening across the globe. But with that awakening, there are pockets of hatred. There are pockets of statements that are uttered. There are pockets of irritations. We can deal with that. And we need to deal with it. And we need to deal with it with an idea of looking forth, perhaps 20 years, thinking of where we're going to be if we continue on this particular level of developing hatred rather than developing, you know, that which would lead to positive discussion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. 
This is why Imam Malik ibn Anas, rahimahullah, who was known as Imam Dar al-Hijra, the Imam of the great uh, Madhab al-Maliki, he was in Medina Munawwara and he points out to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he made his famous statement, مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَيُؤْخَذُ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ وَيُرَدُّ إِلَّا صَاحِبَ هَذَا الْقَبْرِ He says, there is nobody on earth except that you have to take some of what they have said and you have to excuse them for some of what they've said. Which means, you know, you throw back some of what they've said. Besides the one in this grave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he was the one who came with all the goodness. So some people say, but you don't like the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't like the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we start our talks with his name, after the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and so on. Let's not create divisions. Let's not misunderstand one another. It's not a matter of not liking the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is a debate of what the interpretation of love is. Is it a statement from the mouth, or is it really actions that will prove that you really love the method and the path and the way of this great messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And I've said this many times in the past. Sometimes you have people who smile at you and tell you, I love you, I love you. You know when you have these secret agents and they have their missions and they're told to go and befriend someone, they pretend like they're your girlfriend. Wow! And they tell you, I love you and so on. And they stab you in the back. Don't they? Is that love? They could have been as pretty as they were. They could have had the best perfume. They could have looked at you. They could have winked at you. They could have, in my language, chuffed you up, you know. They could have done anything else. And you were busy thinking, wow, she loves me. Without knowing that that is not love. Love is actually proven in a totally different way. Is love that you only utter the words, I love you, and then in the back you stab them so badly. Is that what it is? Those are the cries of the ummah today. Those are the cries of the ummah today where a lot of us claim to be lovers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're not prepared to give up a cigarette. And we're there to debate. Is this makru or is it haram? That's the debate. So we cry as an ummah because we're insulting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People are suffering in, 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 in perhaps in a sham, wherever else it is. And someone says, no, this man belongs to such a sect. We don't need to help them. Let, let, you know, let them go. Subhanallah, may Allah safeguard us, may He protect us. Tomorrow they will say the same thing about me and you. Then what will happen? This is why Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ At the end of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah says, The kuffar are protectors of one another. If you do not do the same, there will be great fasad and corruption on earth. What this means is, you also need to be protectors of one another. You also need to stand up for one another. Today, brothers are not prepared to speak to their brothers because of some monetary issue or some maulana who's come and said, they have done black magic on you. A'udhu billah. Wallahi, it's a fact. We've destroyed relations with our sisters because of some guy with a big pink turban who came and tell us that that particular lady did black magic on that particular woman and that's my sister. I never talk to you again. Yet they supported you for 20 years. The statement of one jinn that perhaps is completely false. Nobody would know the unseen besides Allah and we fall prey to a statement of one man who's lying to us through the skin of his teeth, who deserves perhaps to be hanged because of such a grave statement. And now we have stopped speaking to our family members, believing some stranger, some folk, just because he's got a big beard. Is that what the ummah is all about? Where are the people who are making the ummah cry? Because we have turned away from the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a fact of life. So today we need to resolve our matters. If you've been told someone's been doing black magic on you, if a name was provided, I guarantee you and I stand guarantee that is a lie. That's what it is. It's a lie. Don't say you were not told. One day you will be asked, did we not send someone to tell you that this was a lie? And don't say no, we said it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our ears. May He grant us goodness. And I'm ready to challenge anyone in this regard because I know how it works. That's the reason. The jinn speak to people. And these people think, oh, these jinn are so intelligent and they're Muslim. They tell you, I'm a sahabi and I'm a this. They are liars. How can we believe them? They are liars. If you were to say you are lying, they give you a different name. You are lying, they give you another name. But what these people do, 
They take the first name and they go ahead. So the whole aim of Iblis is to break families. So they've succeeded in breaking the family. Just because you had hiccups that didn't stop. Allahu Akbar. This is the ummah. This is the condition of ourselves. And then we really, we cause crying. And we don't know how to solve it. But you are causing it. The cause was you. May Allah open our doors, grant us love. This is why we say, the first discussion that we need to start with, make peace with yourselves. Make peace with your family members. Make peace with the ummah. Learn to love one another. Learn to discuss matters. Learn to educate yourselves when it comes to matters. Learn to really sacrifice when it comes to learning what Allah has sent down to you and to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Instead of learning to create hatred, learning to draw division. Really, this is what is happening sometimes. If you are feeling within your heart the growth of hatred against others, something is wrong. There is something wrong. You need to have a concern, even for the non-Muslims. You need to have a concern. How best can I assist? How can I help? How can I be of benefit in a way that tomorrow they see the light, they can perhaps reduce their enmity towards Islam by acknowledging that this also is a religion of note. In Allah la yu'ayyidu ad-deeni bil-rajul al-fajir. Sometimes Allah can assist the cause of the deen by a person who is sinful. And sometimes He can even assist the cause of the deen by a person who is not a Muslim. Look at the example of Abu Talib, the uncle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was not a Muslim. He died in whatever condition Allah chose for him to die. But as a non-Muslim, he did not accept the deen, although he stood up to protect the Muslims. To this day, there are so many non-Muslims in strategic positions who, who come out to defend Islam, who speak the truth, who have a few morals and values. Why? Because they know the truth. Or they have interacted with good people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And we don't understand it. So, if this was the case when it comes to the non-Muslims, what about the Muslimin? Those whom we have so much more in common with. Why do we just want to find little points to, de- you know, to divide ourselves? For what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And as I say, I am not at all belittling the fact that yes, we, de- we do need to educate ourselves. But I am saying in the process, we don't need to cause hatred. Really, we don't. Now, let's go further beyond. Today, across the globe, there are two two major types of issues that we face. One is what the world might call natural disasters. Huge crises, humanitarian crises. We need to reach out to them. Sometimes we take the 10 pounds in our pockets for granted. Subhanallah. You know, we wouldn't mind going to roast at E7 there, London, and mashallah, spend some money. And say, subhanallah, here it is, I had a lovely steak, and that's it. You will find in the same restaurant, perhaps, there will be a little donation box. Your change can make a change. Do you know that? Your change can make a change. You might think it's 50p. Well, if there were a thousand like you, we've already got 500 pounds. Subhanallah. Amazing. With that 500 pounds, do you know what you could do? Perhaps in Bangladesh, you could pay up for maybe 50 families for a whole month, looking after them, accommodation, food, and other necessities. And you don't even realize it was just the 50p. Thank Allah, your pound is stronger than the US dollar. (laughs) Yes, fortunate. So these little coins mean a lot. Wallahi, they mean a lot. This is why we say, cries of the ummah. You name the countries. There are problems there. Look at what happened in Haiti some time back. That disaster was something that was really beyond their control. It wasn't even because of hatred between them. They did not fight one another. No, it was something that overtook them. Take a look at what happens in various other places. Natural disaster. You find avalanches. You find earthquakes, you find volcanoes, you find so many other disasters that occur. Ask yourself, how have I reached out? Wallahi, even if it is with one pound, one pound, through the correct channels. Remember, correct channels means study hard before you give whom you are giving, you know? 
Don't just accept a little uh, Facebook message from someone saying, I'm collecting for this and for that. And you know, without knowing them, you're now going to deposit 500 quid there. And you don't know, uh, he, he has actually uh, got a flag outside his house saying Burma. So he says, when I'm collecting for Burma, he says, yeah, that's the name of my house. You heard that? Because he's got a flag outside saying, welcome to Burma. Allahu Akbar. You have scammers all over the globe. People who are worried about their pockets, lining them up. So you need to make sure even the little that you've given should be the right channels. It makes a huge difference. Why? Tomorrow, if we happen to go through a similar situation, and only Allah knows, because natural disasters do not know borders, you find the whole world will come and reach out to us. The whole world will come out. Why? Because every time we've had problems anywhere across the globe, they reached out to us. And if Allah saves us and we don't have those types of issues, may Allah never you know, test us with those things, then at least we have the reward for it. Perhaps Allah will grant us elevation in our deen, in the deen of our children, in our health, and so many other things. Because you know, sadaqat and charities go a long way in creating ease and comfort and contentment within the heart of a mu'min and a believer. So that's the first type of crisis. You will find it all over. Take a look at what happened, for example, in Bangladesh recently, where the buildings came down crashing. Whatever the reason, whoever they want to blame, you're not going to bring those people back to life. They're gone. It's a lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whilst, yes, the authorities would probably, and they are, trying their best to avoid a repetition of it. It's our duty to reach out even by one pound. Your one pound can make a difference. People might think, oh, I needed to play that game at the PlayStation there. I needed to put the pound in there. Don't play one game, give that pound away. One game. Instead of the, the ten games, you play nine games. And this is the cheapest, that's what I'm saying, the lowest that you could actually give. Then we have crises that are because of man. Wars, war zones. So the innocent suffer. You have humanitarian catastrophes because of people fighting. How best can we help the most innocent of them? The children, the women from across the globe suffering because of the men sometimes and what they've done. We don't want to discuss what's right and wrong. That's a topic on its own. Today, we'd like to discuss how best we can reach out to these people. Today, we'd like to Take a look at how we can reach out to those who are affected, who are completely innocent. The children, look at the clips that we see on our phones on a daily basis. Today I received a clip, a little baby complaining about what he's lost. He has nothing left, completely nothing. How did I reach out to him? Did I say a little prayer at least? That's the minimum I could have done. No matter what level of the deen you may be on, some people are more regular with their duties than others. But at this moment in time, your reaching out could make you a person who's done a better deed than those who might appear to be more regular. May Allah grant us goodness. You know the ahadith, which make mention of reaching out to animals, and how it has been beneficial for those who've reached out to animals. Imagine reaching out to a little boy, a little girl, some widow. When the Prophet ﷺ says, a person who works hard to serve the causes of the widows and the poor, is similar in reward to a person who has stood in salah all night, or prayer all night, and who has fasted all day. Imagine. That is the reward. How did I reach out? Today sometimes we sit back and we relax, thinking, no, you know what, I'm living in a first world country and everything is okay. To be honest with you, life is tougher in the UK than it is in Zimbabwe. You're looking at me. Subhanallah. I'll be honest with you. For us, if you throw a seed by mistake onto the floor, onto the ground, your tomato plantation grows. Does it happen here? No. Believe me, if you throw an orange seed by mistake, you will find a tree there. Within a year, you have fruit. Believe me, sometimes two years. Poor, poor, and everything else. And guess what we do? We export it to Europe. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you see what I mean? So you're saying we die of hunger? If a disaster occurs, it may be, but naturally, the earth is fertile. Subhanallah, the, the time zones. Look, I'll be honest with you, I've come to the UK, and I cannot get used to the time that the sun rises and sets. I cannot get used to it, because back at home, the greatest difference between sunrise and sunset is only one hour throughout the year. 
throughout the whole year. The weather is between 15 and 35 degrees throughout the year. Nothing less, nothing more. Amazing. Now you tell me, Allah has gifted each one. Look, everyone's smiling, thinking, wow. Let me say something that will really make you smile. Our fast is never more than 12 hours. <laughs> Subhanallah, welcome to Zimbabwe for Ramadan. <laughs> this year, I think it will be nine and a half hours, to be honest with you. Mashallah. I think l- l- half your time, maybe, perhaps. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Guess what? The reward is the same. <laughs> I'd like to think, inshallah, that Allah will reward you greater because really it's not a joke. I I would not, uh, you know, it's difficult to fast so long hours and really uh, good news to you. May Allah grant you even a higher reward. Uh, But I'm sure there is a recompensation if you fast dedicatedly for uh, 18 years. 18 years later, your fast will only be a few hours. Allahu Akbar. Think of what I've just said. Allah gives it back to you. So just like you've got a long fast now, there will be a long night, 18 years down the line, when you will be able to fast so short, then we might have to shift this site. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and open our doors. Let's get back to what we were saying. Brothers and sisters, it's about time we reached out to the suffering people of the globe. And it's about time we did it in a transparent fashion where we know where we are going, where we are heading, what we are trying to achieve. And we want to reach out to these people for this reason and that reason. And this is what we'd like to do because we are part of an ummah. I want to say something that might wake some of us up. I have seen crises in some Muslim countries whereby non-Muslims have reached out to them sometimes, sometimes in a bigger way than Muslims. Did you hear what I just said? I have seen crises in non-Muslim, sorry, in Muslim countries, where sometimes non-Muslim organizations, even those affiliated to religions which are not Islam, have reached out to our brothers and sisters more than we have. It has happened. Why? Because coincidentally, everybody thought, or a lot of people thought at one time, what is my little pound going to do? So if I think that and all of us, the the few thousand think the same, what will happen? There are others who give away a percentage of their salary. And then they seize the opportunity. When you are at a point of difficulty, that is the most vulnerable condition you may be in spiritually or it may be the highest. You know that today when you have a big problem, you either turn to Allah or you start questioning Allah. You know that. People who have a major issue, they either say, Ya Allah, help me. They become better people spiritually. Or they start saying, where is Allah? Na'udhu Billah. May Allah safeguard us from it. They start questioning. So to seize that opportunity, to make sure that it becomes something where we can strengthen our spirituality, rather than let it drop down, that is where we come in. We need to reach out to these people. And Allah has created it in this way. But sometimes the others reach out. And so... They say, well, Allah did not come. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. So brothers and sisters, we have people crying across the globe. And like I started by saying, not only those crying, those we have made cry. We have made them cry from amongst our family members, our sisters, our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, our relatives, our husbands, our wives, our daughters, our sons. Sometimes we've made them cry for reasons that are absolutely unacceptable, completely. How then are we going to solve the bigger crises? <laughs> Allah will not change the condition of a nation until each individual changes his own condition. And now I'd like to end by saying something. When we read that verse, we find that within our own hearts, we have a lot to deal with. We have to turn to Allah ourselves. We have to turn to the true spirituality, the true deen. We have to turn to the worship of Allah alone. We have to turn to the example laid for us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to become strong upon that which is upright, that which is good. We spoke about kindness to all the creatures of the Almighty. But remember one thing. If you are not kind to yourself by being obedient to your maker, 
then kindness to humanity will be short-lived. How are you kind to yourself? لِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ You have a right over yourself. That is not only speaking about your rest and your food and the good things you have and your clothing and so on. No, not only that. More importantly, you have a right over yourself that you make sure that you do not allow this body of yours to head anywhere besides paradise. I could have worded that differently, but I didn't. You have a right over yourself that you ensure that you do not head anywhere besides paradise. So what do you need to do? Engage in a lot of istighfar. Ask Allah's forgiveness every day. So many times, Ya Allah, forgive me. Start becoming stronger. Give up your bad habits. You will help yourself. People around you will, will learn from the example. It will be a good environment. You will then be able to reach out to so many in so many different ways. Today, if I were to die, for example, whilst having tried to lead a life within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many people will learn a lesson. Many will learn a lesson. And at the same time, nobody's going to bring me back to come back to life. So my time, if it is up, it is up. I cannot do anything about it, nor can you. But I don't know when I'm going. So I need to make sure I rectify my life as soon as possible. Whereas if I choose not to do that or to delay, I may die in a condition where I cry later on when tears too late. No point to cry now. You know what Allah says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, towards the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the oppressors. The oppressors refers to many things. One is those who engage in polytheism. One is those who oppress in any way. And Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ رَبِّ رُجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِيمَا تَرَكْتْ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when death overtakes such a person, what happens? He says, oh Allah, grant me a return. Let me go back. I've seen what's happening. And now let me go back and I will do some good deeds. And Allah says, nay, it's just a statement being uttered from the mouth. This is why we say, make peace with yourself here and now by obeying Allah's instruction. If you can get up for Salatul Fajr and you can read your two units of the Sunnah of Fajr, Wallahi, it is better for you than whatever the whole world has to offer. Listen to what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. This hadith reported in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Raka'ata al-fajri khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha. The two sunnah that are read just before the farad of fajr, they are better, better than this whole dunya and whatever it holds. This whole world and whatever it holds. So if I can get up, forsake that bed and sleep of mine and make my wudu or ablution or ghusl if I need it and I can stand up in front of my maker for a few minutes at that particular time, it is better than the millions and the billions that one could amass and the millions and the billions that the whole world together would have amassed, perhaps the trillions and the quadrillions and even getting to quintillions and what have you. You know the figures. Better than all that, the two rakaat. But I'm not ready to do that. Why? You know, the timing here in the UK is a little bit awkward. You know, it's tough. I'm sure Allah will forgive me and so on. No, no excuse. Put up your clock. If your girlfriend had to phone you at that time, you're up. You'd go and hide in the back of your room and say, Hey, yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> it's a fact. People are doing this. But Allah calling out, may Allah safeguard us from illicit affairs and immoral relations, which are also causing tears and cries of the ummah. Because we are not ready to lead a pure, clean life. You will never achieve something good out of something that is impure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us goodness and ease. Really, my brothers and sisters, there is a lot that we need to improve on as Muslimin. A lot that we need to improve on as Muslimin. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in every single way. I see my 40 minutes are up, mashallah. But at the same time, really, it has been a very, very blessed afternoon that I've spent here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to forgive me for anything I may have said that perhaps was wrong. It was from me and from shaitan. 
And at the same time, anything that we have said that is correct and upright is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember one thing, we love one another for the sake of Allah. Remember one thing, we need to look at the common points inshallah as an ummah. We need to get together and we need to try our best. Try our best to help one another, assist one another, reach out within ourselves, within our families, within the ummah, and even on a broader scale, within humanity at large, and then the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah to open our doors, God us goodness. It was definitely a blessed afternoon. I hope and I pray Allah accept it from us. And until we meet again sometime, I say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.